Hello, I'm Amara Jones, and today is Wednesday, March 18th. This is Caffeine TV, your daily news brief, here to take you through three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the real housewives. The first number of today is 30. That's the number of seats that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel's party, Likud, garnered last night, ensuring his continued grip on power. The Israeli elections held yesterday were largely seen as a referendum on his policies. Now, you remember that Prime Minister Netanyahu is most infamous most recently for his trip to the United States, where he gave an address to Congress without the knowledge of President Obama, essentially telling the president to kick rocks. And many analysts at the time said that it was an, an election ploy, and it seems to have worked. But that's not the only off-the-rails thing that Benjamin Netanyahu said or did in his come-from-behind victory. As a matter of fact, he hustled throughout like Lucius Lyon before empire. With one of the most egregious things happening on the actual day of the elections, he sent out a message to his supporters implying that Arabs were stealing the elections, telling the right wing to get to the polls because Arabs Arabs were arriving, quote, in busloads, close quote. Well, with those tactics that the New York Times describes as, quote, scorched earth, close quote, he seems to have won, but like Lucius Lyon, he's built his empire and now he's got to live in it. The next number today is four. That's the number of years that Tyrod Nathan Webster Pugh served in the United States Air Force, and yesterday the United States government charged him with attempting to take those skills and join ISIS. Now, he was grabbed in January by the Turkish government attempting to cross into Syria from Turkey in order to join the death group, but he was deported back to the United States, arrested, and is now charged. Now, after serving in the Air Force, he then became an airline mechanic at American Airlines and then took those skills later on and served in Iraq with a military contractor doing the same thing. But somewhere along the way, he became disaffected to the point that he wanted to blow stuff up. But it wasn't only about death and destruction for him. In the text of a letter published in USA Today, he told his wife that one of the reasons why they had to join ISIS was because they could possibly end up in a mansion surrounded by people like them. And honestly, with delusions like that, with his capture, ISIS may have been the one to dodge a bullet. The last number today is 12,000. That's the number of Starbucks there are across the United States. And with an initiative launched by the company this week, you're encouraged to talk about racism as you wait for your flat white. I can only imagine your faces. Now, earlier this week, the CEO of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, sent out a tweet with the hashtag Race together, encouraging all baristas to write race together on your Starbucks cup, signaling that they're ready to talk about racism. I don't know about you, I'm often talking to them about how to get my triple tall Americano right. I don't know if I have the mental space to talk about Japanese internment. Of course, Twitter reacted to all of this with a mocking campaign. But there are two things that are off with the race together campaign. One is the fact that all of the Starbucks ads for it feature white people. And second is, as Ora Bogato of Color Lines points out, 40% of Starbucks' employees, baristas, are people of color, but only 16% of the people in the executive suite are. So it seems as if race together might need some fine tuning. But honestly, if Starbucks wants to race together, how about becoming a sponsor of Caffeine TV?